Hi everyone, it's Justin. This video is for you if you've gone through a pandemic last year and you feel like you haven't quite gotten your energy and your productivity back, or not yet. Me. <laughs> this video is also for you if you feel like you're working from home and it has gotten you a bit comfortable. You get distracted easily, you spend time on WhatsApp when you should be working, you have issues with your productivity, or maybe you're just bored with your current routine and you need a bit of a shift in the way you do things. I'm making this video today because I've had all of the above in the past year. Even though I've actually been self-employed as a creative for over five years now, I'm supposed to be highly productive, efficient, motivated, multitasking. <laughs> and yet the truth is, I've been struggling too, and I've had to rethink my productivity system to find a new sort of way of proceeding. I want to share that with you because it helped me dramatically get out of that situation, and I think it can help you as well. The first thing that I needed badly <laughs> was a mindset shift. I'm usually very efficient, I think. I run my own label, I have people working with me who might need to brief, I do the design and the production management for my collections, I make videos on YouTube, I talk at conferences, I mentor women entrepreneurs, and yet I sleep at least eight or nine hours per day and I have time for sports and friends. <laughs> on paper, that looks good. However, in the past year, I saw my input slowly starting to decrease. I was getting less and less efficient and the same amount of work was costing me more energy. I don't know if you noticed or not on videos. Did, did you? Did you see the difference? I was working on the new collection despite COVID. So it was full of logistical difficulties, which I was trying to compensate by working nights and weekends to get it ready, basically. I couldn't go on holiday or properly disconnect from work and I started to feel seriously drained. And I know I'm not the only one who had that experience. So I shifted. Instead of going for five tasks that I want to complete every day, I'm going for three. Instead of working until what has to be done is done, I only work six hours per day. And the rest of the time I can chill. <laughs> if I don't feel like working on strategy for two hours today, I will push it to tomorrow or the day after. And that's fine. I'm not pushing myself. I'm choosing to have a lot more free time. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing in my business collapsed. I learned that I don't have to give 120% all the time. 80% is enough. In fact, I found that giving 70% is enough most of the time. And then when it really matters, I do what I call a sprint. I give 100% for an hour or two, and then I kind of turn my brain off again and I go back into a sort of autopilot. I'm in brain saving mood. And I'm not saying it's good to be lazy or anything like that, but when you're working creatively, which I think all of us do, at least partly in our lives, then when you feel that your energy levels are depleted, forcing yourself further is probably not a smart idea. <laughs> Creativity flows when it has free space, free time that it can expand in. Hence the need for a mindset shift from I must do, I must, I must, I must do, I can, if I want to. I went even further than that. I prioritized non-work over work. You know that metaphor where you have to fill a big salad bowl with big stones, medium stones, and then sand, aka mini stones. If you look for the video on YouTube, I'm sure you'll find it. You have this big salad bowl where you have to put in your important tasks, so the big stones, the medium tasks, and the million mini tasks represented by the sand that you have in your life. You're welcome to try this at home. If you put in the sand first, then the medium stones on top, they will fit, but then the big stones on top, they don't fit into the bowl anymore. Whereas if you start by placing into the bowl the big tasks, then the medium ones, then the sand, at the end, everything fits in. Conclusion, you have to put the big stones first and then the little stuff into your bowl. You still with me? So for me, I decided that the big stones are non-work related things and I prioritized these things. They are technically unnecessary for my job, but they make me feel happy and inspired. For instance, reading the Lonely Planet Guide of Japan. I can't travel to Japan right now, but one day I will, and for days I dreamt of cherry blossom. <laughs> I also learned how to use a scoring board, because why not? <laughs> I'm gonna show you a random week in the future for confidentiality, but I'll try to be as concrete as possible while talking you through it. I use orange, for private things and free time. So every week I start with that. Lunch every day. Hell yes, <laughs> essential. 
social time with friends or doing things outside, going to museums. Call my aunt this week. Sports, for sure. And also the time needed to get there. Classes I'm taking, currently that means an Instagram class that meets twice a week on Tuesdays and Fridays. A class on art history, modern art, fascinating. I'm reading The Artist Way, I should say rereading. <laughs> and it has exercises, so I'm doing exercises from the book for my creativity routine. Two more slots to learn things, I don't know what yet, topics to be determined, more on that later. Then I use blue for my label related stuff. I'm getting a new delivery of jewelry production, so I need to check the quality, that takes a few hours. Call with the pattern makers to review the timeline of the latest clothing project and whether we did well or not that much. <laughs> Block time to review the sales of last month. I need to calculate when I might be stocked out by design and by size. So I need to see whether I need to order a reproduction. I need to calculate that. Then request to the jewelry supplier for an updated price list because I need to recalculate the quantities and see how much that would cost. So calculate quantities. Then I have a weekly check-in with my shipping team. Time for emails. I block that time to be sure that the rest of the time I'm not doing emails because emails are not productive work. So as little emails as possible. And then plan a blog post for this month. Then red is for YouTube related things. I need to review my analytics for last month, plan the topics for this month, write an outline for the video of this week. I like to work with not a full script, but at least all the bullet points of what I'm going to say. I have a film slot editing, upload and program the video on YouTube. That takes a while as well. Two reminders to answer YouTube comments, but normally I don't forget that. I don't. Briefing with my graphic designer on Wednesday at 10 a.m. That's usually photos for Instagram, photos for the blog posts, Pinterest update. She helps me film sometimes, etc. And on Friday at 11 a.m., because on Friday I will sleep until 10, because I can. And there we need to plan this month's newsletter. I send it at least once a month. Super important things that have a fixed deadline and that I don't like to do. For instance, filing my taxes is in green. That cannot be postponed. This is like a hard deadline that needs to be done. As I'm doing all this planning for the week, what matters is that I have a good balance between blue and red so that both get some stuff done. Not more than two or three meetings per day, plus the preparation time right before, because a task expands to take all the time that it has to be completed. So when I prepare just before the meeting, every time my deadline is the meeting and I don't spend too much time on preparation, that's called Parkinson's law. Number three, most of my time remains free. It is space to think, create, and actually work on what I want. I don't know yet what that will be, and that's okay. Number four, the beginning of the week is always fuller than the end, so that if I feel tired, I can progressively slow down. My weeks used to be a lot fuller than this, but as I said, I'm in Sarah mode, so I decline any meeting that isn't absolutely necessary. This is how I prioritize non-work than work and I still keep control of how much I'm going to do. Next point and an essential one. I focus on the goals and only the goals. Let me explain. First, I define the final objective here. Then I wonder what step do I need before it to get there and before that step and before that step and before that step. So where do I start? I always plan backwards how to get to that goal because it's a lot easier to guess what's coming before something than what's coming after. Then I'm not looking for the aesthetic or the fastest way of getting to that goal. I don't care how it's done, so to speak. I'm looking for the way that achieves the goal with the smallest effort. And I feel like entrepreneurs tend to always look for the way to overachieve, to reach the goal the best and the fastest way possible. But it costs a lot more energy than if you think, I just want to get to the goal, no matter how I get there, kind of. Well, obviously, as long as it's legally and ethically okay. You got that, I don't have to mention that. Concrete example, I want to become a recognized expert on topic ABC. For that, I need to be a guest on the most famous podcast about that topic, let's say. What are my options? I can become friends with the podcast host on Twitter, though that might take a while because he gets tons of tweets. <laughs> 
I could talk about him on Instagram and tag him until he notices me. I can go to a live recording event of that podcast and hope to meet him at the end. Or I could find someone in PR who already knows him and that person recommends me personally. That's a lot easier and it's more likely to succeed. Okay, so now how do I convince that person that I'm knowledgeable? And so on, so on, going backwards. Note that while I'm planning backwards like this, I'm never addressing the question of what if this intermediary step goes wrong or what is my plan B? No need to spend energy on that and only tackle the question if it occurs, like if it turns out that I cannot reach my goal and otherwise, no. Nope. Next thing, I completely avoid feeling creatively pressured. <laughs> As somebody who works creatively as my main job on both YouTube and the label, there are times when I will have hard deadlines, like I'm filming a video tomorrow, I need to have my topic and my talk talking points today. <laughs> or I promised the jewelry prototyping person that I would finish designing the designs this week because next week the prototypes are being made. That's a deadline, right? I have to come up with something. If you've been in that situation before, you know it's quite stressful. So to avoid getting into that situation in the first place, I always work ahead without it feeling like work. How do I do that? I keep lists. I do it in Evernote, but any app that auto syncs between all your devices will do the same job just as well. I have a list of video ideas, a list of things that I want to design, a list that I call read listen and watch, which is always full of things to look forward to. Fabulous list. A list of smart marketing strategies that I see other brands using, a list of inspiring quotes, etc. I really have a list for everything. And then every time I need an idea, I put my lists and I pick something from there on demand, like Mary Poppins, you know her bag? Same system. <laughs> Everyone is creative, everyone has ideas. I'm completely convinced of that. The problem though is that the ideas don't always come at the right moment. It's not like <laughs> so thanks to my lists, I always have ideas ready for when I need them. How the process of generating ideas goes? Something like this. Do I want to do another collection this year? Hmm. I need to talk to my production manager. Ooh, nice shoes, nice shoes. What color is that? Blue with just a hint of red. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was staring, sorry. I could do a project based on color combinations. Is that a thing? Ooh, she's not feeling comfortable in her dress. Yeah, is it a problem of fit or a problem of size? Oh, I could do a video about this. I need to check whether that's common knowledge or not. Well, that could be a video idea. I need to have these nails done again, my God. I could create a color palette of nail polishes for cool and warm undertones. Are there nail polish brands that aren't too chemical right now? What are the brands? I need to check that. It looks like I'm procrastinating, but actually I'm just observing what's happening in my head, writing down the ideas that come without judging, and then I can have a look at them later. I never erase these notes because if they're not the right idea right now, they might still be a good idea in six months or in six years from now. In general, I try to have as little process as possible. So I don't want to spend time reformatting, reorganizing my own thoughts. <laughs> However, if I know that next week will be a stressful week, I will sit down on Sunday afternoon and prioritize ahead of time. That's why I always work ahead so that I don't get stuck when the time comes. So I will prioritize my ideas for the next week and my to-dos. Then I can close my laptop again, go enjoy my Sunday evening, have a good night's sleep and know that I'm ready for the Monday. Next point, learn, learn, learn. When you're working from home or working alone, it's very easy to get into that hamster wheel where you forget that there is an outside world full of possibilities, way broader than your current scope of concern. <laughs> Who's been there? Raise your hand if you've been there. Give this video a like if you've been there. <laughs> I surely can relate to this. That's why one of my top priorities is to always be learning new skills and knowledge. You saw that in my calendar. I like to do a mix of classes that have something to do with my line of work, plus classes that have absolutely nothing to do with it. Classes that I enjoy taking, not because I have to, not because I should, but because I can. 
in this past year alone, opportunities to learn online have exploded. They expanded exponentially. You don't have to go anywhere anymore. You don't have to book a full day. You can just do an hour here and there. I'm a huge fan. If you want to learn new things and new skills, I recommend that you try Skillshare. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes on topics like photography, creative writing, marketing, graphic design, illustration, etc. Lately, I watched the classes by Ali Abdal and Thomas Frank on productivity because I was dealing with my productivity situation and it really helped me to get other people's perspectives. These two are experts on the matter. For each class, you have chapters, the video, plus the transcription. And as you can see, there are no ads anywhere. My next class is about illustrating on an iPad. <laughs> Most classes are under 60 minutes. So even if you only have 16 minutes per week, you can find a class that fits your schedule. And as they're sponsoring this video, the first thousand of my subscribers to click on the link in the video description will get a free trial of Skillshare with full access to all the classes. If you found this video useful, thumbs up. Thank you very much for your kind support. Here and down below in the description, I will link a previous video of mine where I explain more productivity tips and hacks, like concrete little things that you can implement in your daily process that I use all the time. <laughs> I feel like productivity, managing your schedule, is something that should be taught in schools. We learn all about the French Revolution, in my case, <laughs> but nothing about running a company, dealing with your finances, managing your calendar. That is necessary knowledge, isn't it? If you're not subscribed to this channel yet, don't forget to click on the subscribe button before you go watch the other video. I will see you very soon in a new one. And until then, take care. Bye.